Can you hear me? Look, I don't have a lot of time. I have behind the scenes footage from Bryson's newest video. Check this out. But in reality, Bryson was and had always been alone. He thought that lying to his audience and showing make-believe scenarios of his fabricated romantic escapades would fill the hole in his heart. But he sat there feeling emptier than ever. He checked his phone, hoping for a distraction from his sad reality, only to see the text message thread between him and his crush. He had sent hundreds of desperate messages to her. She had not responded to a single one. No amount of lying or fantasy could stop these facts. In miserable reality, the situation hit him like a ton of bricks. In truth, he had nothing, nor would he ever feel the touch of a woman. Bryson wept bitterly. Was somebody texting me while I was showing you that? It's probably fine. My wife Jen and I actually made the music in that storyboard. We make a lot of the music that ends up in the backgrounds of Bryson's videos. It's a ton of fun to make these creative projects with my family members, but it's not always easy. A lot of times when I start a project, I should be thinking, I want to write good music, but I end up thinking, I need to make something unique, something breathtaking, something no one has ever heard before. That mindset doesn't help me feel creative. It makes me feel paralyzed. After learning through trial and error by myself for so long, I thought that I'd share some of the tips and tricks that I've learned with you. This is kind of a gimme, but if you don't want to listen to the song you're making, then spoiler alert, nobody else will want to listen to it. A good way to start writing music that you like to listen to is to imitate the music you already like listening to. For example, two of Jen's favorite sources of music are the composer Chopin and the soundtrack from the Pride and Prejudice movie. When Bryson asked us to write a sad song for his video, Jen sat down at the piano and thought to herself, what if Chopin and Pride and Prejudice had a baby? She then played the song that she heard in her head. To help with the creative process, every art form has rules, and every artist can tell you when you should ignore those rules. This piece actually has a really good example of breaking the rules a little bit. Let me show you. We play in C minor, which includes C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C. If we use those notes to build chords, we can build the chords C minor, G minor, F minor, and to bend the rules a little bit here, we change that B flat for a B natural so we can play G7. That's why this chord sounds a little bit spicy. It's kind of breaking the rules. It's outside of the expected key, um, but that's why it sounds so cool. Something I'm pretty guilty of is overwriting. I feel like I need to write more lyrics and more chords and more melodies, more everything. There's a pretty good chance that I've already found the core of something beautiful, but that I just haven't developed it enough. Once we'd established the melody in the first section, we wanted to restate it with a little bit more energy in the second section. So instead of writing something new, we just show the same thing from a slightly different angle. We actually play in octaves and it makes it sound like regal and huge. It's this really beautiful sound. If you use the space in between your notes intentionally, you can more effectively control the energy of your piece. Faster, shorter notes usually means higher energy. You tell me, which one of these drum breaks has higher energy? In the beginning of the song, we play these open, slow notes, not very many quick, fast, short moving notes. And that gives us this beautiful, luscious sound, but it's a little bit basic, it's low energy. Then moving forward, we try to increase the energy by making more movement happen. The left hand isn't just playing these big chords anymore, now it's playing in eighth notes, faster, shorter notes that increase the energy. And then moving into the final section, everything is moving much faster, meaning everything feels like it's higher energy. Contrary motion is when different parts of your song are going in different directions. Imagine a guitar player playing notes upwards while the bass player plays notes downwards. We can see contrary motion in this piece too. While the left hand is playing notes upwards, the right hand is playing notes downwards. Now if we play them together, we kind of get this cool ebb and flow, almost breathing sound to it. Everything comes together, everything goes apart. 
Digital tools give you artistic superpowers, letting you create things you would have never been able to make by yourself. You can draw in the fastest, craziest, biggest notes, which even the world's greatest pianists just physically couldn't play, and the computer will play it back for you perfectly, every single time. But remember, everybody else who has that software has that exact same superpower. And with everyone super, no one will be. The way that we took advantage of our software is writing something that most people can't actually play. There are these huge arpeggios playing while the right hand is dancing up and down. I don't think a normal person could actually play this. So that's it. Those are some of the things that have helped me out in my songwriting career. If you'd like to hear Jen perform this song, you can see it at her channel here. And she does a really lovely rendition. Speaking of lovely, Molly, look. <gasps> this is Molly. She is our Australian Shepherd Pitbull mix. She is just a lovely, beautiful little pup. And we like her a lot. She's been sitting next to me the whole video. If you have any other uh, things that you'd like me to talk about or things you'd like me to explain or kind of unveil, let me know in the comments and I'd be very happy to help out. I hope you guys all have a good day. See ya. Molly, go get him. Cheegums, I frame like immediately. Okay. <laughs>